and I have on the phone Perla Batayev. Hello, Perla. Good morning. Good morning to you. My goodness, it's been a few years since we've talked, and and I'm so excited that you're coming to town. You're coming to our town on this uh, this Saturday night, I do believe, at the Center for the Arts. I'm so excited. I love coming to that area. Yeah, it's beautiful. Now you're 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 coming to town, and you're going to do the your Leonard show uh, this week. And uh, tell us about the show. Well, I've been, gosh, I mean, I've been singing Leonard Cohen songs since um, I met him, (laughs) but doing this concert now for about, you know, 10 years, and there's something about it being Leonard's, what would have been Leonard's 83rd birthday that makes it really important for me to celebrate him. I mean, this man, you know, changed my life, and I think He's changed a lot of people's lives with his work, so uh, I'm deeply honored to be able to to sing these songs. You know, the uh, Leonard's uh, the last few years. I mean, his last tours were he was just really very much at the top of his career. I would say, and that's unusual for an artist in their later years. Well, you know, I think people say that. Uh, I think the top of his form. Uh, was when, you know, when we were on tour with them in 1988 <laughs> and 93. Uh, and, the, you know, I I think those years, and it's not just because I was on tour with them, but it, I feel like uh, he was at a peak of being, telling stories and being so funny. And, um, you know, in the last years when he was touring, I really believed that it was uh, driven more by having to be on the on the road and doing a tour but i honestly think you know that uh his age it, he stopped telling he didn't really tell stories anymore but um the audience was much bigger so if you're talking about success in terms of, of numbers he was very popular um which i was thrilled that he got to see how much uh, the public loved him finally because you know in america In the North America, when we would tour, the theaters that we played here are much smaller than the theaters in Europe. Yes. Now, now what years did you play with Leonard? I I started playing with Leonard in 1988, and then did the 93, also the world tour in 93. And, of course, we were friends till the the end, but um, he was, you know, working till, like, the day he died. I mean, he just worked nonstop. He was a very, very devoted artist. Absolutely devoted. And he was, he was not one of these people that would just scribble a song down and play it the next day. He, he, he labored over every word. He did. And I am one of the lucky humans who actually was in the room when uh, he would be writing. And, um, and nothing, uh, he doesn't, you know, he's not easily distracted either. Uh, he could have company, people coming in and out, and he just was going to write. That's what the plan was. So um, it was an amazing thing to watch. I'm going to play one after we finish our conversation. I'm going to play okay. the uh, the duet that you do with Julie Christensen, which I think is just, just fantastic. Oh, uh, and some, yeah. Yeah, that Beautiful is that... Song. Oh, my goodness. Uh, that is just uh, something that, you know, uh, you're doing all kinds of things nowadays. I went on your website and you're you're playing mm-hmm. you're playing all over the place. And I notice you're going yeah. to be in Spain and you're going to be playing at a place called the Cafe Central for oh, about a week. Yeah. Cafe Central. It, this is a very special place. And I, I actually planned this to uh, be, you know, I'm doing this the week um, to commemorate the week that Leonard died. It's, it's that week. And I was in Europe when I got the news of Leonard's death and went to Cafe Central, actually, and realized it was so magical and so surreal. Ben Sidron was playing, and he played... Oh, my ben goodness. Sidron, he played songs that he wrote about Lorca. And I remember how Leonard was so devoted to the poet Federico Garcia Lorca and I just got chills being there and felt like this was exactly the place that I needed to be. And I walk outside and 
just right out there near the club is a statue of Federico Garcia Lorca. And I, I just said, this is, this is where I have to be to celebrate, you know, this anniversary. And, um, so they were kind enough to invite me to come and sing for a week there. So I'm, um, I'm very thrilled. And to me, of course, singing Leonard's music is just so personal. It's so personal. Yeah. And um, the, my love for him is so deep. And this process of mourning is so complicated. And I'm just, you know, letting it be what it is. But to be at Café Central and celebrate his life and his work on that particular week is just everything to me. Well, you know, uh, I put together a group of local people here, and, and we do a Leonard show. Uh, we call it A Thousand Kisses Deep. We do it a couple times a year, and we've been doing this for about six years now. And the amazing thing is people come back over and over and over again and hear the same songs. And it, what is that about his music? I don't know anybody else, anybody else's music that – what is it about that? Well, it's it's the work. It's obvious it to me because I don't know that there's that quality of work out there. Yeah, uh, you know that it's a body of work. I mean, um, Leonard jokes about. Well, I don't know if he's joking, but that Hallelujah. You know, he wishes no one would sing Hallelujah anymore, and I think it's because so many people don't um, don't maybe respect it the way it, it should be respected. That's my take on it. But, but you know, I believe that all these songs are so deeply addressed by Leonard as the writer, just, just personally deeply addressed, and he toils over them. So it's like Shakespeare. It's yeah, yeah. forever. And everyone will keep going to see Shakespeare as they will keep going to um, listen to Leonard music yeah absolutely i think it is timeless and one thing i find being a performer performer myself and singing a few of his songs every time i sing them i discover something different it just comes to me in a different way and i yeah i, I just can't think of any other artist that that um you know that happens with it's it's just and and there are things about his music you know one of the things that i've grown to appreciate about his music and it's not really talked about I mean, of course his poetry is you know astounding but his melodies his melodies are so interesting yeah well i i think they're they're actually really um they tend to to lean towards the folk realm uh, truly i think he his melodies are actually quite um, familiar with people. I think that's oh. why a lot of people can do them. That's why people embrace these these songs is because melodically they're not that complicated. They're just they're just so heartfelt and so it's like coming from a Jewish tradition or coming from a deep folk tradition. He, in a way, his thought process might be uh, complex in a way. But the music and the melodies are super accessible because he wanted yeah. to be able to, to reach people. And, you know, for me, uh, it's, it's, it's more about um, that these songs are personal to me. And I, it, just, it just runs, this music runs through my veins. And I feel, um, you know, it's, it's a deep connection that I have with Leonard when I get to sing the songs and sure. i oftentimes feel like he is in the room sure um but are, are you going to be bringing an ensemble or what type of group are you going to have with you this yes week? well i'm bringing a, a pretty phenomenal uh oud player i recently ah. leonard leonard and i went together for the uh funeral service of uh john belizikian who was um leonard's favorite oud player and we were on the road together for many years and uh i after that, I thought, you know, I really do love the oud, and I've never played with an oud before, an oud player, and they're not that easy to find a really terrific sure. oud player. So a friend of mine, I was doing a session, said, you know, there's a really terrific guy in town whose name is uh, Dimitri Machlis. You know, he did all the music for the movie Argo, um, and, I, and I just thought, do you think he would want to play with me? And sure enough... Um, he played, and he's been playing with me ever since. Uh, so he'll be coming to Grass Valley this 
enormously celebrated oud and guitar player. And my friend uh, Petta Carpella will be on percussion. He's done a ton of Broadway shows, including The Lion King. He was on tour with Josh Groban, and he's a beautiful guy. And my pianist, who is a stellar, lovely man, Michael Sobey, is coming to play and sing with me. So um, I'm just thrilled to be able to share these people with Grass Valley. Yeah. Our listeners that maybe have just tuned in, I'm speaking with Perla Bataya. She is going to be performing at the Center for the Arts in Grass Valley. She's going to be doing an evening of Leonard Cohen music um, called uh, The House of Cohen. And, you know, this is... um, uh, we're so blessed up here in our community to have these these wonderful venues. Um, and I think the last couple shows that I did with you were at the Nevada Theater, but the first ones were at the Center for the Arts. Yes, yes, I I love both of those venues. They're beautiful. And and what else are you doing in general nowadays? I mean, you do a lot of different things, and you were involved with some theatrical um, uh, productions just about a year well, ago. Yes, everything everything that I do, of course. Um, I mean, I do some visual arts. I, I paint a little bit, but I definitely music is what I do. And I wrote a musical about uh, Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera called uh, Blue House. And um, we were invited to the Ojai Playwrights Conference and got to workshop it there. So I'm still working on that, and um, I'm very excited about that piece. And also, you know, still doing movie scores and singing on a lot of television things. So um, I keep busy, but uh, touring and singing is, is, is the thing that I do most and I love. Can't live without that. Are you doing any other shows up in uh, Northern California around this, this particular one? I am. I'm, I'm going to be at Stanford University on the 7th. Uh, the first show has already sold out, so there are. they started uh, a second uh, show, so they put a second show up for us. And that's the only one up there, and I think I'm, you know, we're probably going back to Freight and Salvage in the spring. Um, and back down south, I'm performing at the Broad Stages, and then UC Irvine on the 27th of October, just before I take off for Spain and do my Spain tour. Well, you know, if anybody wants to take a vacation in Spain, this is uh, this is it's it would in. Be actually, the week to do it. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's just fantastic. <laughs> I, fantastic. You got me kind of excited here. I'm going. Hmm. Well. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Oh, if you've never been, now's the time to go. I, I mean, it, just because not for me, but <laughs> that it's uh, the prices are incredible. The flights and the hotels. I mean, everything is just uh, very affordable for. And, and you're be, you're going to be playing seven nights in a row. Seven nights in a row, yes. Oh, mm-hmm. fun. That's that's a... Yeah. Well, hey, Perla, but, you know, thank you so much for speaking with KVMR, and it's sure, sure nice thank to... you, Paul. ...to hear your really voice, and it. and uh, we'll, we'll talk some more soon, and, yes. you know, uh, maybe we'll find some collaboration we can do somewhere down the road, oh, because, I love that. because I you love know, the that. people here, uh, uh, they, you know just really you know really love your music and when you come to town it's i'm I'm just bummed that that i'm not going to be there myself i'm going to be up in the high sierras just camping and getting away from everything but i'll be certainly thinking about the show and thank you so much and it's going to be this uh Friday, this Saturday night at the Center Saturday for the Arts night. in Grass yeah, Valley, and you know, you just go online. You can get all the details on tickets, and it's a it's a wonderful venue. I worked there eight years. I I have my my sweat in the walls of that place. <laughs> so <laughs> so I'm just just thrilled that you're go- that you're going to be in town, and uh, you won't get a chance to hear it, but you've heard it before. But after after we we close our interview, I am going to play uh, anthem that that you have performed with with julie christensen i i think that that is just a, a piece of music that uh, uh I, in fact I, I watched the youtube the other day and uh, and it's just it's, it's so beautiful and the two of you just thank sing you. it sing it so well so thank you thank you perla and thank you paul and uh have a great uh have a great trip to spain and and uh, i'll be talking to you soon and have a great we have a great saturday night in nevada city you too. Thank you so much. I thank, appreciate it. Thank you, dear. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. And we have been. I've been talking to Perla Bataya, and we're going to go to a piece of music that she did with um, with Julie Christensen. This was um, a live recording 
that was part of the the uh, documentary um, I'm your man documentary with uh, Leonard that was done about oh maybe about eight years ago eight or nine years ago so have a listen Break of day. 